Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. You were able to see them in the intro and next to me, these beautiful glowing desk risers. But before I go into detail on uh, the processes that I used to uh, create this, I want to give you a little bit of a backstory. Many years ago by now, uh, my very first proper uh, PC desk setup, I 3D printed some desk risers uh, mainly because I literally just wanted the desk to be higher, um, fairly tall, so the IKEA Alex drawers were just not tall enough for me. While I was at it, uh, I ended up uh, integrating some uh, lights into them to make them glow, but that was just an, a random LEDs that I had lying around soldered together, uh, but it still looked quite cool. I then ended up submitting that uh, setup uh, to Setup Wars uh, on the TechSource YouTube channel, uh, not expecting much, but little did I know that I didn't just win one of the first deals of approval for that setup, but uh, shortly after Ed from TechSource uh, contacted me directly uh, to have some uh, custom death prices made for one of his setups. I of course accepted and born was the Wolverine setup which ended up uh, going viral on YouTube. And after that I got quite a few requests to make uh, custom desk crisis for other people. Out of this I ended up uh, creating a small side hustle uh, called Art of Two together with my dad. And uh, we mainly uh, sell uh, various uh, custom desk crisis. We also had uh, other products uh, over time but the main one that people actually were interested in uh, were these desk prices. Now, our intention was never uh, to sell millions and uh, apart from the odd mention on TechSource uh, and uh, if you googled us you would find us, we didn't do any marketing. So there was not a big uh, volume but since we were just kind of 3D printing them in our spare time, we also did not want to sell a lot of them. Over the years we created quite a few uh, various uh, motifs and different themes and also uh, featured a couple times on uh, TechSource once again uh, for the various setups that he built. But uh, all of those uh, desk prices were not illuminated. Now the reason was that uh, the LEDs that I added into the original ones, uh, they died uh, soon after and it was just extremely unreliable and did not have any uh, good way of managing the cables. Now quite a, a few years later I have a lot more experience uh, with electronics and PCB making uh, so I decided to give it another track. Instead of just kind of hand soldering uh, some random uh, LEDs that are stuck into the 3D print I decided to make a proper PCB that I could then integrate and use uh, cables with proper connectors in between them so that it would be reliable and also uh, easy to scale up. Since I had used uh, the NeoPixel addressable LEDs in uh, quite a few keyboard projects before, it was a no-brainer to use them as they give me super good control over them, uh, allowing me to have a bunch of effects while being very easy uh, to incorporate any, to any of your designs and there are plenty of uh, off-the-shelf controllers available for them as well uh, that uh, give great functionality at a very low price. The first uh, prototypes I just kind of took some uh, of the LEDs that I had left from other projects, hand soldered them together to see kind of how many would I need to illuminate something and I started uh, 3D printing some translucent uh, razors out of uh, clear PLA. These uh, experiments uh, then uh, kind of gave me enough uh, knowledge uh, to be able to design the first PCB uh, which I then ordered through PCB. Now, while uh, PCBWay is a long-term sponsor of this channel, uh, since I was not intending on making a video about it, or uh, and it's also uh, kind of uh, more on the other business, I just uh, paid up uh, directly, but since they have the great deal where you can get 10 pieces for just $5, uh, it was super inexpensive, and shortly after I had the first batch of PCBs and was able to assemble and test them. Now while they uh, looked great, uh, I did of course have some uh, minor mistakes and some things that I wanted to change, but that's why I ordered a small set first uh, to kind of prototype. With these PCBs I then uh, was able to make uh, the proper final revision uh, where I kind of reoriented them uh, to give a more even illumination and I also uh, fixed uh, the pinout for the connectors so that it would play well with any of the off-the-shelf components. Now if you think uh, that the desk crisis themselves were super easy to design because they're basically just a block, uh, then uh, well that might be the case for the non-illuminated ones, for these ones I went through dozens of iterations. The main changes were to make the illumination as even as at all possible. If you just have a translucent block where you add some LEDs on the top, then uh, on the top it will be very bright 
and then quite quickly fade off and become a lot dimmer. And especially the corners also are a lot dimmer. Now while this does look cool uh, on its own, I wanted uh, them to be as evenly illuminated as possible. So I ended up uh, carving out uh, quite a big uh, hole in the middle where the light can basically unobstructed uh, travel through the entire height of the razor and then more evenly disperse out. Now I didn't just uh, switch up the, the 3D model a bunch, uh, I also played a lot with the slicer settings. Well, the raw material is basically uh, clear with just a slight tint to it. As soon as you uh, start 3D printing it and there are slight gaps, it becomes quite milky. Now this is good since I want to not be able to see the individual LEDs but have a nice even glow. Uh, but like things like how many perimeters there are, what kind of infrastructure, how dense the infrastructure is, all of that plays a huge role. Because uh, the material is translucent, you can also see the info. So it needed to be very uniform and it needed uh, to look uh, pleasing to the eye. And while uh, transparent PLA is great and it's super easy to print and quite cheap, uh, I did notice that on its own it looked perfectly fine, but as soon as you put it next to other uh, white stuff, it just kind of looked a bit yellowish, which kind of gave it a cheap kind of old uh, aesthetic, which was really not fit. So I ended up moving to clear PDG. It is about the same transparency, but it does not have that yellow tint. It is uh, very uh, neutral uh, in color. And uh, while on the, by themselves uh, they look very similar, having them ne next to other uh, white things, for example with a white tabletop, uh, you can really tell a big difference. Now I did have quite a struggle to print the PDG uh, perfectly with everything, uh, but uh, those are just some slices that needed to be optimized and the filament of course needs to be properly dried. I also found that my Voron 0.1 over there uh, is really great at printing these erasers. Uh, it just happens that four of them fit perfectly in the build plate and basically fill the entire volume and it is a very quick and super precise at printing. I mean, I love my Prusa, don't get me wrong, and it creates beautiful prints, uh, but there are quite a few artifacts uh, on many of the prints on my Prusa, whereas on the Voron it just comes out a lot more smooth. On most uh, regular uh, PLA prints uh, you cannot see these differences because uh, the color directly absorbs it, but if you're working with something that is slightly transparent and you're working with light that illuminates it, any sort of tiny mistake uh, just immediately gets amplified and becomes very visible. Then with the problem of the race system self solved and the PCBs uh, created, I still needed uh, quite a few other uh, components uh, to uh, complete the set. Now the first and most obvious one uh, is the cables to connect everything. While it would be great to have these uh, completely wireless, it would not make any sense since you would have to change batteries uh, or charge them in any way, which then would mean that the first month they're illuminated enough that you're too lazy to change the batteries and charge them and they would not uh, be illuminated anymore, which would be a huge shame. So I went ahead and uh, looked for uh, different cables and while I could find uh, cables for uh, uh, this kind of thing very easily and very different, many different lengths, most of them were, to be quite honest, very ugly. Either they were super colorful or they had huge uh, colorful marking on them, which well, you're not supposed to see these cables, I don't want them to be super colorful in case you can see them or even just if they're underneath the desk managed, I still want them to look fairly nice. So I ended up uh, contacting uh, some manufacturers uh, on Alibaba uh, directly uh, to get some custom cables made and to my big surprise uh, the price for these custom cables even at relatively low quantities is super cheap. The biggest uh, part of the cost at that point even is just getting the cables shipped here. Uh, so that was a very welcome surprise. But it was not all sunshine and roses. Uh, working with a manufacturer can be great, but also there are a lot of details which to me, I'm not a cable manufacturer, so uh, a lot of this stuff uh, does not jump out to me. I mean, there are the obvious things like the connectors, uh, even just knowing what exact connector you want uh, can be quite difficult as there's so many of them out there and uh, they have very similar names and it's not always super clear. I had the additional uh, difficulty that I wanted uh, this system to be compatible with basically any uh, off-the-shelf controller that is designed for these LEDs. So uh, my, the cable connecting to these controllers would of course have to be standardized. And while it, it would be easy to just kind of get a controller in and then wait for it to arrive here, make sure, uh, check I like which connector it is, uh, how is it wired up, and then place the orders, uh, 
doing stuff like this uh, with China just takes forever since there's always like a two week uh, lead time for anything to arrive here. So uh, in the first try I uh, did not quite get everything correct. Uh, the connectors for the Rises themselves uh, work correct, luckily, but uh, the connector that uh, went to the LED controller uh, was uh, a female one, but I needed a male one. So uh, since it was just one connector per set, uh, I just uh, cut them off and trimmed uh, the right ones on there. Uh, that was not a big deal, I just didn't want to like create all the cables by myself, as that would be a huge undertaking and would uh, be much more expensive than having them shipped in from China. Other than that, I'm very happy with the cables. They look very nice. They don't have any big markings on them, but uh, I did not specific. I did not exactly specify that I wanted them to be all in one ribbon uh, instead of individual uh, wires. I thought that was uh, just obvious uh, since uh, all the ones I had seen previously online ha had that design. But apparently, uh, you do need to specify everything. Uh, so uh, the first batch of cables uh, will have individual wires, but that's not a big deal, uh, as uh, it still looks quite neat. Then to manage these cables, we're of course also including uh, the little cable clips that I used. Uh, they just have an adhesive back that you can stick to your desk. There's plenty of them in there, so you can really make sure that all of the cables are perfectly managed and nicely routed and not in the way. This way, you can really not see any of the cables since they come out the back at the very top uh, underneath uh, your tabletop and uh, are routed so unless you are literally underneath the desk you cannot see any cables uh, with this system. I also ordered uh, quite a few different of, uh, controllers but uh, of those uh, like all of them were quite weird had uh, super weird features but there was one that was super small sleek had a simple remote uh, with a lot of features so that's the one I ended up going with. They have something like over 500 modes or whatever that you can cycle through. But what I really like is you can save the modes as favorites onto the remote. So uh, once you found a couple of the uh, animation modes that you like, you can save those and then easily uh, cycle through the ones you like and there's no need to go through all of them. Of course, you can also use this remote to just set it to static colors, uh, which is what I personally would use uh, this for, but I'm probably not the target audience for uh, this kind of system either. And then lastly there's the issue of powering it and well at first I thought I would just uh, have different power adapters for uh, all the different uh, countries in the world. This becomes a huge mess and uh, quite expensive uh, to have all of these in stock and then you have to make sure that you don't ship the wrong one to the wrong country. But since this LED runs on 5 volts and for the amount that we have here that's not actually that much power that is required. So uh, it easily fits within the USB specification. So instead of shipping you uh, the wrong power adapter, we are just shipping you a USB cable and you can use any uh, USB uh, power adapter that you probably already have lying around from an old phone or something. As long as it is at least two amps, which almost all of them are, uh, you will be perfectly fine for uh, up to eight illuminated blocks. The standard set only comes with four, so you can either have a double set or you can have uh, two desks all connected to one uh, single uh, USB outlet, so that should be very convenient. Speaking of the sets, uh, since for most people the desk is against the wall, you are not able to see the back uh, razors. Uh, so we decided to keep the cost down, the standard set only includes four of the illuminated razors and four uh, just standard plain razors for the back, uh, either in black or white, uh, depending on uh, what desk color you have. You can, of course, also get a set with all eight uh, razors illuminated, for example, if you have your desk in the middle of the room or you want uh, the glow of the razors uh, against the wall, then that, of course, is also an option. So with that, I believe I have uh, covered all the different aspects of it. If you have any more questions, leave a comment down below and I will answer you, of course. Also, if you now are intrigued and want to buy one of them or just check them out, of course, the link to that will also be down below. And with that said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.